Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine coming to you with a weekly podcast of the Common Sense MD. That's what we all need more of these days, common sense. It's uncommon. Um, Anyway, it's winter. It's right in the middle of the winter. It's dreary. It's been raining. You know, what better to talk about than more supplements? I have a couple of exciting kind of off-the-wall vitamin supplements that that really are very useful that you probably don't know much about. You may, but anyway, these are two that I've been studying for the last few months and decided I need to spread the word about these two really, really good supplements that you probably are not familiar with. Um, So I want want to talk about um, apigenin. That's the first one I'm going to talk about because I bet you've never even heard about it. But this is one of my favorite flavonoids. And by flavonoids, I mean a plant chemical that kind of naturally occurs and is associated with very healing properties. Think quercetin. Quercetin is my other favorite flavonoid. Very, very important. Um, These things come from the skin of plants, and they're very helpful for them. They're compounds that that are produced by plants really uh, to defend themselves from UV light and also infections. So they're they're natural. Um, They just don't cause side effects much. Um, But apigenin has been found to have antibacterial, antiviral, antiparasitic, antifungal properties, somewhat like some of the other uh, medicines that we talked about in this last two or three years. But it's a great antioxidant, free radical scavenger, um, and it really may help with autoimmune disorders. That's something we treat a lot of, and it's very exciting for neurodegenerative disorders. Um, that's what we all worry about, really. Um, and I initially came across this one. I really wasn't familiar with it until I started listening to Dr. Andrew Huberman out of Stanford. Um, he's kind of the expert um, neurobiologist, um, PhD. Really smart. I love his podcast. He's really big on sleep. And that's one of the, the things that I'm trying to improve this year is my sleep. That's one of the big things, three things I'm trying to work on myself. Um, so sleep is so important. Maybe as important as anything you're, you're trying to do. It's when our bodies turn over and recycle things. We detox. Um, we create new things like growth hormone, etc. So sleep is very important. And if you listen to his podcast, one of the favorite um, supplements out of his sleep stack, that's what he calls it, um, is this apigenum. And it's really related to chamomile. Um, You've heard of that. I'm sure you've heard of chamomile tea and all that and how good it is for you, how it relaxes you. Well, this is a flower extract that's high in apigenin. Um, it's very, like I said, it's very relaxing to you. Uh, it boosts testosterone, believe it or not. Um, it helps anxiety. It actually crosses the blood brain barrier. Um, it helps control blood sugars. Um, it's anti-cancer. Uh, they're doing a lot of studies with it right now for, um, stopping cancer. Um, it really does this, but by keeping the cancer cells from multiplying, Uh, by triggering apoptosis, you know, cell death that needs to occur in cancer cells, not in normal cells. That's the problem with chemotherapy. It kills everything, including normal cells. Um, Apigenin is very anti-inflammatory. As you know, I preach the fight against inflammation, which causes all diseases. So you're trying to keep inflammation out of your body. Um, you know, half the things I podcast on are trying to keep inflammation out of your body, whether it's your joints, your gut, or your brain. Um, there are foods that have high amounts of apigenin in them, parsley, celery, chamomile tea, like we talked about, oregano, oranges, onions, grapefruit, and unbelievably, 
beer. Now, beer has too many downsides to recommend that, but it actually is high in, in these. Um, it's very low toxicity. And the only thing you may get from it's an upset stomach, and that's going to be if you take too much of it. 50 milligrams, usual dose, and it comes in a, in a supplement. Um, Dr. Huberman's sleep stack, speaking of him and speaking of sleep, uh, that's his main favorite ingredient in that is apigenin. But he also likes magnesium 3 and 8. I also take that. If you don't like that, for some reason, you can get magnesium glycinate, which is really good for your brain as well. Um, theanine, which we, we promote all the time. Um, and three times a week, he also takes two grams of glycine and 100 milligrams of GABA. Um, and the interesting thing is about this, he's added something I've been studying for a while. Recently, he's added this to a sleep stack, and it's called inositol. And he, he adds 900 milligrams. That's a pretty low dose of it. But that's, and he takes that every third night. But really, when I started doing a deep dive on inositol, then that's the second thing I want to talk about today is inositol. But it turns out this is an incredible supplement, especially for women, as you'll find out as we discuss this. Um, you see, inositol used to be called vitamin B8 until they figured out that your body can produce it on its own. So it's really not classified as a B vitamin anymore. It's really one of those pseudo vitamins. And now they call biotin B8. Some people call it B7. Doesn't matter. Uh, inositol is a very good supplement, and I want to tell you why. Um, and you can find it naturally as well in fruits, nuts, and beans. It's really more of a sugar, a naturally occurring sugar. Um, it's made in your body, like I said, and, and some foods. Um, there's two main forms of it as a supplement. The only one you need to remember is myo inositol. Um, that's the one that really works the best. It balances chemicals in the body to help a lot with neurotransmission. It helps work with your serotonin and dopamine. Um, it works for a lot of mental conditions that we treat every day like panic disorder, depression, OCD, um, PTSD, uh, without the side effects of a lot of those prescription medicines that we prescribe. It just doesn't have side effects like those do. Um, if you've ever taken any of them, you know they do have side effects. Inositol doesn't seem to. Um, it helps your insulin work better. A lot of diabetics take it. it like I say, it's great for women. It's used a lot for PCOS, works wonderfully for PCOS. It lowers your blood pressure, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, so it's very good for metabolic syndrome as well. Um, it's great for women because it increases ovulation. It lowers the risk of preterm birth um, in those that have gestational diabetes, which is a lot of pregnant women. Um, and if, remember, if you have gestational diabetes, there's about a 50% chance you're going to develop it later on in life. So it's time to start thinking about it if you have that. Um, inositol is that rare supplement that's very effective for panic attacks. Panic, panic attacks, if you've ever had one, and I've had a couple, they're, they're awful. You feel like you're dying. I mean, it's likely to send you to the hospital thinking you're dying for no reason. Um, but you have to use higher doses of it to prevent panic attacks. So you work your way up. Um, you may have to use as high as 18 grams of inositol for panic attacks, but it's safe. You know, I usually start out with a gram uh, for sleep. It's really effective for sleep. Like I said, Dr. Huberman loves it as part of his sleep stack. Um but you can gradually increase your dose. Um, it's just great for women. A lot of people call it the woman supplement um, because women tend to have more anxiety and depression, more panic attacks than men. And it's great for ovulation, fertility, PCOS. It's also good for binge eating disorder and bulimia. Um, you know, it, re it may replace diamonds as a woman's best friend. Um, but it's a really neglected supplement that um, I think is very helpful. Um, 
like I say, they used to think it was vitamin B8, but it's really not. But it's it's in there as a vitamin your body really needs. Um, it produces some of it on its own, but if you have one of these conditions, it's not going to produce enough. You need to supplement with it. Um, but anyway, it's very safe. It's water-soluble, and it's a great thing to consider taking, especially if you're a woman, especially if you tend to have some of these anxiety, depression, eating disorders, PCOS, fertility issues, uh, prediabetes, things, metabolic syndrome, things like that. So uh, apigenin and inositol. Think about them and uh, do your own research like you always should do. And uh, if you have questions, come to us and we'll try to help you live a longer health span and be more happy. I hope you have a great winter. I'll see you next week. Thanks. This is Dr. Tom Rogers. Mm-hmm.